so that today we have another Saturday here. So we have a very big schedule and there's plenty of seating to sit in. So yeah. I want to encourage all you pharmacists to vote for me and to take part in the elections. We need you all to be engaged because this is democracy and if you don't, things won't happen. Thank you. pharmacist and she's the lead for the National Consultation Skills for Pharmacy Practice and she's going to be talking to you today. Her presentation is called From Counselling to Consultation, Changing Culture. So I'll hand over to her now. Okay. Thank you Hayley and uh, good morning everyone. Um, for this next session I'm going to focus on consultation skills and in particular patient-centred practice. Um, I think it's, it's easy for us to kind of think in a clinical manner in our jobs every day. This is a chance for you to switch off your clinical brain and think about that person that really matters in the consultation, the patient, and how you communicate with that patient. So, these are our session outcomes, just a reminder of those today. Um, I think for us as pharmacists, it's really part of our job, isn't it, to make sure, support our patients that they get the best from their medicines. I'm sure you're all very familiar with the medicines optimization model. Um, I've taken this directly from the RPS guidance on medicines optimization. If you haven't, haven't had a look at that document, please do. Um, it's, it's a really, really good document. And there's just a couple of other quotes for you from the medical profession about us. Thank you. 
new services in clinical pharmacy and all those settings. So hopefully we've got a nice broad audience from the five or so hundred faces I can see here and the other people in the other room as well. Um, and we use this opportunity to recognise the people who've submitted for the four categories to see uh, some of the examples of the work they've done and also to get Bruce to do uh, his, his uh, presentation and, and handing over certificates and, and checks. So let me take you through the awards. So this year we had um, over 120 posters, and some of those posters then get moved into the awards uh, area, and also um, then people apply specifically for the awards. Uh, there's a panel.
specialist care out of hospitals and into the community. Acute care collaborations, where local hospitals work together to enhance clinical and financial viability. Urgent emergency care, where new approaches are used to improve the coordination of services and reduce the pressure on accident and emergency departments, such as providing pharmaceutical advice for patients to support telephone triage and support clinical assessment. Enhanced health and care homes, offering older people better joined up health care and rehabilitation services. And integrated primary and acute care systems, which join up GP, hospital, community and mental health services. It's not difficult to see how clinical pharmacy has a huge role to play in every one of those models. And as we look ahead, we'll see more clinical pharmacy services provided through these new ways of working. And in fact, that is already happening. Yeah, enjoying the view so far? 